Welcome to part 5 of What If the Roman Empire Never Fell. When we left off, Rome had just fought a massive war against the Mongols, and even though it would be disputed who would win, for the sake of the scenario, we said Rome won. And since Rome won, we would still have to rebuild because a war against the Mongols would have left the empire damaged. Yet, even with the scale of the Mongol War, that wouldn't even be the worst thing Rome would have to deal with. Enter the Black Plague. Now in this scenario, the plague still would have spread into Europe. Since the Mongols expanded across all of Asia, they created a trading system which connected all different areas of Eurasia, and with trade spreads disease. After the collapse of the Mongols, the plague would have spread from region to region and eventually would have reached the empire. Now, there would be a big difference between our timeline's Black Plague and the Roman Black Plague. The reason why the Black Plague was so horrible in our timeline was because 1. Terrible medicine and understanding of the spread of disease, and 2. The crowding conditions of the European cities. After the fall of Rome, European cities were complete rat traps compared to the great cities of the Middle East and China. They were crowded, poor conditioned, and this was the result of the feudal system and the warlord type system middle-aged Europe lived in. The Romans were great at many things, but they were fantastic at city building. So odds are, even if the plague did spread into Rome, it would affect them. Very badly, in fact. The plague would not have wiped out two-thirds of Europe, though. This would be because of their type of city structures, which would be less crowded and better contained, and most likely would have the better understanding in medicine, which the Romans would have. Yet, even though the plague would not have killed as many, it still would have killed a lot. And I mean a lot. Enough that some form of political upheaval would have occurred just like it did in our timeline. Except instead of feudalism collapsing, the loss of life in the cities and the army would weaken Rome's grip on its provinces. Local people would feel betrayed by Rome and the emperor, blaming them for the plague. Odds are that some sort of civil war or revolution would occur between Rome and the people angry by the plague. Rome would win, but its power would be weakened even more because of the civil war. So a few hundred years pass and it's the mid-15th century. Of course, the Renaissance never happens because Roman thinking never left. Instead, peace is across the empire and the Roman emperors focus more on trade and education than expansion and war. Occasionally, though, there are still fights along the border between the Germanic Romans and the Slavic people of the new state of Kievan Rus, or some form of Russia. Since the Mongols still invade and take over the Russian cities, they rebel, just as in our timeline, and form the entity that eventually becomes Russia. Russia would become a great competitor to Rome, and occasionally wars would be fought between the two. Yet, this wouldn't be the main thing of this time period. In our timeline, the expansion of the Ottomans split Eurasia in half, and Europe couldn't trade with China, India, or the other East Asian civilizations because of hostilities with the Ottomans. So with this, European explorers looked for a new path and cross the Atlantic looking for a quicker route to Japan. Instead, they landed on the Americas, and so on and so on. The question here is, would Rome expand? Would they need to explore? This is difficult to answer, but odds are they would try to focus more on Eurasian problems than trying to explore new routes for trade. Plus, if the Romans could easily trade throughout Eurasia, why would they try to find another route? Of course, this isn't 100%, and it's impossible to know what a civilization would certainly do a thousand years after they actually fell. But those are a few questions to consider. Odds are is that the Romans could accidentally stumble across North America by going up through Iceland, Greenland, and landing in Canada, just as the Vikings had in our timeline. But this is up to consideration. China could have perhaps tried to colonize the Americas too. There are mysterious maps of the world that is strangely accurate, created by the Chinese, dated before the Americas were found. So perhaps would they cross the Pacific and explore the coast of California? Maybe. But this is all hypotheticals and will be explained in another part, because in the next part we will be explaining the Industrial Revolution and Rome. 
or if the Industrial Revolution would have happened in Rome, or if it would happen somewhere else in the world. This part is important because it will affect Rome's relationship with the world and Europe's identity globally. We'll talk about that next time. Until then, like us on Facebook, subscribe if you have not done so. This is Cody from the Alternate History Hub.